Welcome to Fight News Now Extra. I'm John Pollock alongside John Ramdeen and Robin Black. Many changes coming to a lot of cards coming up. And what? let's tar let's talk about the middleweight division. We were supposed to be getting Chris Weidman, Vitor Belfort. The long-awaited fight between these two. Chris Weidman has now torn rib cartilage. Oh. Sounds like a day in the park. Oh. What a way to wreck a Saturday for me. So now they're trying to find something to do with Vitor Belfort. Initially, he had contacted Dana White stating he wanted to fight for the interim title on that card. He's been training, hasn't fought since November of 2013 when he beat Dan Henderson, missed all of last year. They came back, offered him Leota Machida. He was like, oh, no. not Leota Machida. Yeah. Anybody but him. Actually, not the interim either. I want the real, real title. Thing. So it's a, it's a big guessing game right now as to who will fight Chris Weidman and when Chris Weidman will be back. First of all, to Vitor's point, I'm not going to blame this guy. Leota Machida on four weeks notice is a horrendous idea. Yeah. And Realistically, this will probably be Vitor's last opportunity at a championship in his career, and I think he wants to prepare for the guy with a full camp. That being said, going to the UFC and saying, get me somebody, you kind of open yourself up to criticism the other way when a fight does come your way. Yeah, but at the same time, Vitor Belfort is so used to criticism. Yeah, that's if this true. guy went on any MMA forum, he would hear all the smack talk everybody says. He doesn't care. He has a goal, and his goal is to create interest and make the most money he possibly can while competing in mixed martial arts. And trying arts. to get that belt. And trying to get that belt. And uh, So what do you do if you're Vitor? Do you wait? What, what, what is your option I mean, to, to that path? Vitor has the option of waiting. He's made money. He's one of the few guys that have made a lot of money in mixed martial arts, so he can wait. But as we all know, fighters want to fight, and they want to stay active. And, and if you wait... Leota Machida right. is fighting Luke Rockhold in yeah. April, and you have a solid yeah. winner there. Vitor's made us wait. Chris is about to come yeah. back. You know what, Vitor? Me, go call up Rory McDonald. Yeah. You guys could go have a coffee together and chat about promises and how much they mean in the UFC. And that's why Vitor says he wants to fight Mark Munoz. He believes that's Mark. an easier, easier fight. <laughs> Where did he get, get, get that name? Yeah, well, Where did, like, no, I won't fight for I only have my eyes set on the 185. But what, Mark Munoz, I can beat oh, I'll that. take I'll, him. I'll take no Jacare, no, no Yo I'll Romero, fight Mark. Oh. no Gegard Vitor Mousasi. Belfort. A couple things. One, I, I don't know him personally, but I have friends that know him. They say he's just a wonderful yeah. person. He's an incredibly sweet person. He's also a brilliant, brilliant fighter, man. This guy's one of the great fighters. But mentally, he's kind of a tomato can. Like, you know, between TRT, getting busted for Jews, pretending certain realities are not realities and other things, the way he sort of perceives himself. He is a brilliant fighter, but he kind of sees himself as this dramatically super important to the world of the UFC. And we know for a fact, and this is not a Vitor criticism, none of the individual fighters are. When Anderson Silva can yeah. leave and George St. Pierre can leave, they can do without Vitor Belfort. That's a reality he has to wrap his head around if, if, at going forward for his career. But I love watching a guy fight, and I don't particularly hate hearing him talk because it's so weird, it's kind of interesting. You look at that UFC 184 card. Recently, the UFC has announced that that price increase on pay-per-views, and I think that does put the onus on the UFC to Got really to stack these pay-per-views yeah. because when you do have the right card, I think price is irrelevant. But, and case in point, Mayweather and Pacquiao being rumored, that's going to be a $100 pay-per-view. If you have the right fight, people are going to pay for it. If you don't, it can be a, a big struggle. Ronda Rousey, Kat Singano, you do have your main event. Second from the top, as of right now, is Holly Holm, Raquel Pennington. Mm -hmm. I think it is very mm -hmm. much in the UFC's best interest to find a suitable number two fight with Weidman out. But you also have to remember, it, it comes down to what happens inside of the cage because, you know, fans go out and spend an additional 5 or $10 on a pay-per-view, even if it's big names, and... As long as those names deliver, they're going to be satisfied. You have to, so it's not just about having big name fighter A versus big name fighter B. You have to have matchups that are going to entertain people so that it's like, oh, what a ripoff. There's no way I'm going to spend that type of money again. You have to have uh, fight. Uh, you know, fan-friendly fighters on the card if you're going to have an increase. I think that $10 increase is going to make, you're going to lose literally no pay-per-views at all because from a business standpoint now, let's say you're, you're a musical act. You can be Katy Perry and literally try to reach everybody, but in most cases, that's not the case anymore. You're some bluegrass band, you find all the people who love your band, and you sell them stuff. They are your consumers forever. The UFC is that. The UFC isn't something that appeals to everyone like Katy Perry. The UFC is something that appeals to who 
it appeals to, we're their audience, and they're, we're the only ones that they're going to make money from. So if they charge an extra 10 bucks, we can complain. We can go on websites, that Dana White's a jerk face. We can do all that stuff, but ultimately we're going to pay it. So I don't think it's going to be harmful. We are, but you look at the numbers from this last uh, UFC 183, Anderson Silva and Nick Diaz. I was getting calls from people that don't normally watch fights. Yeah. They were going out to watch this fight. So that increase would have made sense for this. So the next card is like, yeah, who, sorry, who's, who's in the main event? Who's in the co-main event? Yeah. I, well, I, I think, think I can skip this. And one. let's not remember, for people getting their cable bill, it's not just yeah, Silva right. Diaz. Jones and Cormier is on yeah. that same cable yeah. bill. So they paid a lot of money in January for two relatively yeah, big pay per $20. Events. There's more now. That yep. January would now cost you $20 more. Yeah. So I think fans, it's it's simply going to be, they're going to pick and choose. Fights that they want yep. to see. I we're going to watch everything. Yeah. Now that's where the audience you're talking about. Yeah. But now you've got to talk about this other casual fans where, you know, two years ago, they were, everybody was watching yeah. everything. Now it's like, I can kind of afford to miss yeah. this show. And if, I can afford to miss the next show. Well, they've show. created that environment yeah. because there is so much. I mean, yeah. to a person, amongst every single person that I talked to that was once following everything, it's all Always, just how many yeah. shows it has nothing to do with the quality of fights, number of stars, just weight division, none of that. It's always just there was just so much to follow, yeah. and it just became too much. Yeah. As a result, you get the people who follow everything, whatever that number is, is ninety thousand, one hundred and sixty thousand, two hundred, what a million, whatever Millions there is worldwide world. yeah. that watch everything, and then you get your things. People don't watch every football game. I don't watch football games, but I sit in a bar with my friends from uh, Fantasy uh, Sports Network watching the Super Bowl. So, and Manny Pacquiao versus uh, Mayweather. Mayweather. A whole bunch of people who don't watch boxing are going to watch that. Yep. And I think the UFC occasionally has some of those, but for the most part, we're their audience and they'll charge us an extra 10 bucks to be in. All right, we're not charging you an extra 10 bucks. That's why we give you extra for free. And we have more of it coming your way.